हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा महाराज हरे कृष्णा महाराज हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा सो लेट मी शेयर द स्क्रीन हियर So welcome everyone to our Bhakti Shastri, lesson number 11, fifth chapter, looking at fifth chapter this morning, today, must be an afternoon for some of you. Okay, overview, chapter 5. So chapter 5 begins with Lord Krishna explaining that karma yoga is greater than karma sannyas. Better to do karma yoga than to do karma sannyas. Safer. We will hear the discussion between Lord, Lord Krishna and Arjuna. That's the first section. And then we'll hear about Nishkam Karma Yoga for a jnani. Usually karma yogis don't have much knowledge, but if they do have knowledge, it's better for them. But then the relationship between Ishwara, Jiva and Prakriti, that will be in the next lesson, not today. And then we'll hear about the vision of the jnani, Paramatma Vadi, seeing the super soul in everything and then there's a couple of verses on dhyana yoga which is the sixth chapter an introduction to the sixth chapter in the fifth chapter and finally the last verse the peace formula so there's the sections of the fifth chapter small chapter only 29 verses not a big chapter but some important points. Here's a summary of the chapter. Outwardly performing all actions, but inwardly renouncing their fruits, the wise man, in other words the jnani, purified by the fire of transcendental knowledge, attains peace detachment, forbearance, spiritual vision, and bliss. Oh, sounds very inviting, right? So, if we get, with, if we become purified by transcendental knowledge, then we can go on to achieve these things. So the first section, first six, six verses, described karma yoga and jnana yoga are equal in purpose but as a process karma yoga is better so karma yoga and jnana yoga and purpose they're the same but the process of karma yoga is better why is it better we will hear in this first in these few verses in the beginning here lord krishna will explain why Karma Yoga is better than Jnana Yoga. So connection to the previous chapter, the first verse, coming from Arjuna. Arjuna has a question similar to the question which came at the beginning of the third chapter. Arjuna is still not satisfied in uh, the distinction between knowledge and devotion, our buddhi yoga and karma yoga. Arjuna said, O Krishna, first of all, you asked me to renounce work, right? Karma sannyas, renounce work. And then again, you recommend work with devotion, or that could be also buddhi yoga. Now, will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial? Right? Eta yoga, 
Tach Shriya Etayor Ekam Tanme Bruhu Sunishitam Ekam Etayor Ekam Tell me which one is beneficial. Sanyasa Karmanam Krishna or Punar Yogam Sa Samsasi Srila Prabhupada explains in the first verse in the purport. In the fourth chapter, the Lord told Arjuna that all kinds of sacrificial work culminate in knowledge. However, at the end of the fourth chapter, the Lord advised Arjuna, wake up and fight, right? Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, remember? Lord Krishna told Arjuna in the end of the fourth chapter, armed with knowledge, O Arjuna, stand and fight. So here Prabhupada saying, Lord told Arjuna, wake up and fight, being situated in perfect knowledge. Therefore, by simultaneously stressing the importance of both work in devotion and inaction in knowledge, Krishna has perplexed Arjuna and confused his determination. So Arjuna wants to make it very clear for us as well as for himself which one is required, what's required. Is it knowledge or is it action? Arjuna thinks one with knowledge doesn't act. Here we see comparison. Uh, in the third chapter, Lord Krishna explained about karma sannyas. Third chapter, text 17. There is no action for one who has attained realization of atma. And then again in the fourth chapter, Lord Krishna was describing the different kinds of sacrifice. We remember we looked at the different sacrifices and then in text 33, Lord Krishna is there, O son of Prita, all sacrifices of work culminate in transcendental knowledge. Hmm? The purpose of all kind of sacrifices is transcendental knowledge. Renunciation of action or inaction in knowledge. We were speaking about action and inaction. One who sees inaction in action, that is devotee. Inaction in action. So inaction in knowledge. That is for the devotee. So then in 42, at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna says, stand and fight, work in devotion. Armed with yoga, O Bharat, stand and fight, meaning work in devotion. Yoga matishtatishta Bharata. So, not clear what does what is arjuna supposed to do is he supposed to fight or is it knowledge because arjuna is thinking renunciation give up the action so that will be that's knowledge transcendental knowledge renounce all action but Krishna is saying, stand and fight. Prabhupada explains in the purport, Arjuna understands that renunciation in knowledge involves cessation of all kinds of work performed as sense activities. But if one performs work in devotional service, then how is work stopped? 
Right? Renunciation involves stopping all kinds of work performed for sense activities. But if one works in devotion, then we're still working. How is, we, haven't, we haven't stopped work. In other words, Arjuna thinks that sannyas or renunciation in knowledge should be altogether free from all kinds of activity because work and renunciation appear to him to be incompatible. And then Prabhupada explains, he appears not to have understood that work in full knowledge is non-reactive and is therefore the same as inaction. So Arjuna has, he's not understood that one can work and at the same time be renounced. The idea, what, what we should be renounced from if we're working, how can we be renounced? Renounce the fruit of the fruit. Right. right, we have to renounce the fruits, that's the idea, yes. So work in full knowledge is non -re without reaction. It's the same as inaction. Text number two describes Lord Krishna speaking, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation. Renunciation of work and work in devotion. But of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. But they're both good for liberation. One, however, work in devotion is better better. We'll hear why. Well, we want you to tell us why. <laughs> okay. We want pairs. How many people are in the class today? Maharaj, it's 11. Oh, we're down to 11 today. <laughs> okay. So five pairs. One group of three. Even, uh, even 10 I can say because Revati is also like somewhere. Okay. okay, so five pairs. We want you to go through this, read this uh, text 2 and 3 and find statements showing work in devotional service to be better than renunciation of work. Okay? Yes, Mr. Just read text two and three. Not a lot. Shouldn't take you long.
Hare Krishna, we are in breakout room. Yes. Maharaj, this is breakout room, Maharaj, or this main room? We should, uh, well, I'm in the main room, yeah, you can join the breakout room. Yes, Chaitanya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sorry Maharaj, I don't know how we came out of the room. Okay, we are in room 4. You join it, okay. Okay. Maharaj, you want me to answer the thing? Uh, no, are you okay? Are you managing all right? You're reading the purport? Yeah. Yes, yes, Maharaj. I'm reading the first, I mean the second verse now. Okay. Then go to third. Okay. Recording in progress. Are you okay there, Parta Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Have you, have you got a book? Two points, Sahasatya Prabhu. I'm reading the two and three purpose, Maharaj, to find out the points for uh, how he's working in Krishna consciousness. Okay. The renunciation. Okay, I will leave you with it. Recording in progress. Recording in progress.
सहस्त्र तीर्थ प्रभु Recording in progress. Okay, I think, is everyone coming back to the main room now? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, I think we should go back to the main room. Are you able to see the slide? Yes, we can. Yes, Mark. Okay, here's our question. Okay, statements showing devotional service is better than renunciation and of work. Someone who would like to begin? You got a, a good statement? Yeah, Maharaj, uh, I can start. Yes, Prabhu. So, so Maharaj, uh, in the purport for the second verse, uh, Prabhupada is saying, uh, uh, just a second Maharaj, I'll just find the exact uh, or So, uh, without Krishna consciousness, mere renunciation of fruitative activities does not actually purify the heart of a conditioned soul. So, if someone is just renouncing the fruitative activities, uh, I'm thinking that I will not perform any devotional service, uh, his heart will not get purified. Uh, but on the other hand, Maharaj, uh, the action in Krishna consciousness automatically helps one escape the result of rotative activities. So one will not have to separately uh, uh, make effort to re uh, remove the effects of rotative activities. Okay. That's in second verse. Yes, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, just to add that, Prabhupada says that renunciation always entails a risk of falling. Yes, so, right. There, yeah. Yes, yeah. Always there is a risk, risk of falling, falling if someone artificially renounces. Yeah, renunciation. So, the path of Gyan is dangerous, right? Precarious that you can, you can fall down. Why? Why is there the risk of falling? 
purification maharaj purification is not happening because uh, they are renouncing the fruitive activities but purification can happen only by krishna consciousness that's what rupa right so that's why there is a risk of falling yes and they have a they want to stay away from activities they don't have proper engagement they're not fully engaged they you know the process of gyan is just all on the mental platform contemplating studying scriptures and like that and speculating on the the conclusions of the scriptures and they don't have proper engagement for themselves so without proper engagement of the soul then they will be insecure all right anybody else has anything on the second verse any other quote what about uh, yes maraj as long as one is engrossed in the consciousness of sense gratification one has to trans migrate from one body to another so you know uh, like renunciation and devotional service is different till till the time uh, we are not on the platform of devotional service we have to trans migrate from one body to another so that trans migration will always take place then roba is saying uh, one must develop a love for devotional service to vasudeva only then can one have the opportunity to get out of the bondage of material existence this material existence will continue uh, until we don't develop you know the devotional service to the rupa speaker of material okay yes good all right yes that's that's another point here in uh, by prashna prabhupad in text 2 is that uh, we have we should uh, claim that everything belongs to krishna and we should employ every you know employed for the service of the lot because everything belongs to the lot okay yes yes everything belongs to krishna so it should be used for his pleasure it is better that it is at the devotional service platform only the way one can understand each of us in jagat or only at in tam jagat it is only at that platform that one can seriously implement this in his life so that's why it was the right thing over there that the last thing is complete but it is only that everything is existent belongs to the lord no one to see improper right so go So this 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 renunciation of work, Prabhupada describes it as artificial renunciation by the sannyasis of the Mayavadi school. Right? They turn away from the world. They take sannyas to give up the world. But in Krishna consciousness, the devotees want to utilize everything in the world. we don't want to give up we say all is all krishna's it should be used for krishna's service so it's better to use things make a use of things rather than give up everything how much can you give up <laughs> nothing is ours to give up it belongs to krishna we should use it for krishna's service so that's practical application of devotion of service was there any quotes in text number 3 did you get anything from text number 3 on this hari krishna maharaj yes maharaj ji uh, according up uh, propat is uh, mentioning in text 3 that uh, a, a fully krishna conscious devotee is is a uh, renouncer because he does he don't he don't uh, he don't lament for neither for hatred or desire for any result so 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 it is we can conclude that uh, devotees who are fully in krishna practice in krishna conscious they are automatically a sanyasi because they are in they are not uh, means they don't hate people or desire for any results of their actions yes Yes, Prabhupada writes. There's one purport. It comes in chapter sixteen. He talks. He said these devotees who are working in jobs in the factory or in the office. He said they're all actually sannyasis because they're 
they're, they're contributing the results of their work for the service of Krishna. So he said they're actually renounced because they work not just for their sense gratification but they work for Krishna. In the beginning of the movement, the devotees, they, some of them had jobs like Satsvarupa, later became Satsvarupa Das Goswami. He had a job and he wanted to give up the job because the other, other people were not working. But Prabhupada said, no, no, you cannot give up your work. He said, you're paying the rent. <laughs> he said, your money, you're, you're earning money and contributing and it's paying the rent for our place. He said, so you shouldn't give up your work. But later on, Prabhupada told him, okay, you can give up your work now. So, sometimes we have to work. In the beginning, Prabhupada told all the devotees to find jobs, go and work. Working in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. So this is important to remember. We like to be active. Okay, let's see, we've got some quote here. Without Krishna consciousness, mere renunciation of fruitive activities does not actually purify the heart of a conditioned soul. Yeah, some, you, you picked this verse out, you picked this section out and you quoted it. As long as the heart is not purified, one has to work on the fruit of platform, but action in Krishna consciousness, action in Krishna consciousness automatically helps one escape the result of fruit of action so that one need not descend to the material platform. Therefore, action in Krishna consciousness is always superior to renunciation, which always entails a risk of falling. Re renunciation is dangerous. Okay, talking about re renunciation here. Renunciation, vairagya, right? There are different kinds of renunciation. What what are some of the what different kinds of renunciation have you heard of? Yes, that's here on the screen. But there are some other ones. Uh -huh. You know some other kinds of renunciation? Yukta vairagya Maharaj. Yeah, we've got Falgu and Yukta Vairagya here on the screen, on the slide. Shrinik Vairagya. Huh? Shrinik Vairagya. I, I don't know this word, what is it? Uh, Maharaj, Shrinik Vairagya is like, uh, you see, for an example, if I'm hurt with something, okay, so, I think we need to say that from now on, not, uh, for example, I, I wanted some food and I didn't got any food. Uh, so I'll say that now onwards I won't eat any food. So I'll stay hungry. And after two, three days, I'll again start eating uh, food. So this, this is shining where I get it. It comes because of any incident. Uh, if there is momentary any incident. Shanik means so momentary. Momentary, where? momentary, yeah. Shanik, Shanik where? So it comes and goes, it comes and goes. So we all have yeah. that kind of where I in our life. Maharaj, it is like Samshana Vairakya also. Okay. So it comes only for some time. Wow. Yeah, Samshana, Samshana Vairakya. Yeah, we talk about Smashana Vairagya. Is it like the renunciation at the crematorium? You know this yes, one? Maharaj. You is it like yes, that? Yes. Yes, yes Maharaj. Same thing. Only in some, in some circumstances you feel that. Yeah. Prabhupada talks about this renunciation at the crematorium, or he, he used the term smashana vairagya, that you go to the crematorium, your friend, somebody you knew, some relative is being cremated and you feel really bad, and you feel, oh, what's the purpose of life? We're all going to end up like this. One day it will be our turn also, we'll be burning our body. Life has no meaning. 
But the next day there's a party or there's a pro uh, some pleasure trip or something and everybody's enjoying and it's all forgotten about. So that's one kind of vairagya, very temporary. The, the idea of renouncing the world, giving up pleasure. And what's the other kind of vairagya we often hear about? Lord Chaitanya told Raghunath Das Goswami not to behave like this. You know the, the word? Monkey renunciation, what did Markata, it? Markata, Markata Vairagya. Yes, Markata right, Vairagya. that's right. Markata Vairagya, right. Markata Vairagya. Monkey renunciation. The monkeys appear to be very renounced. They're living in the tree and they're naked and they're just living on the, in the trees. But they're very attached to sense gratification. They're always trying to get food. And they have so many family, so many things. They're very bad behaved. So that's Markat Vairagya. Lord Chaitanya told Raghunath Goswami, he said, don't, do, don't be like that. He said, behave like a normal person. So here we're talking about Faugu and Yukta Vairagya. So Faugu Vairagya, false renunciation. And yukta vairagya, yukta means in relation to Krishna, renunciation which is in relation to Krishna. So Prabhupada explains here, renunciation is complete when it, when it is in the knowledge that everything in existence belongs to the Lord and that no one should claim proprietorship over anything. One should understand that factually nothing belongs to anyone. Then where is the question of renunciation? Everything belongs to the Lord. It belongs to Krishna. Just like if, if you work in the bank and you're counting so much money, you may say, I renounce all this money. <laughs> but it's not our money to renounce. It's all belongs to the bank. So in the same way, everything we, someone was quoting Ishopanishad, Ishavashyam idam sarvam yadkin chajagatyam jagat. Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. So this is the, the principle of Ishavashya recognizing that everything belongs to the Lord and we shouldn't, com we shouldn't be claiming proprietorship. We should be thinking, this is mine, this belongs to me. That's wrong. Srila Prabhupada explains from the purport, text number two, one who knows that everything is Krishna's property is always situated in renunciation. Since everything belongs to Krishna, everything should be employed in the service of Krishna. This perfect form of action in Krishna consciousness is far better than any amount of artificial renunciation by a sannyasi of the Mayavadi school. So the Mayavadis, they say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Nitya. Right? That the Brahman is truth and the, the Jagat is mitya, it's false. So they want, they want to renounce the world and they take sannyas, the, their idea of sannyas is to renounce the world. But a devotee in Krishna consciousness wants to utilize everything, not renounce it. We want to use it all for the service of Krishna. So. Prabhupada said, this is a perfect form of action, rather than giving up everything. Use it for the service of Krishna. Prabhupada. Hey, Krishna Maharaji. Yes? Maharaji, you, uh, so this was the same that we um, we discussed in action in, in action. There also, it was discussed like a sannyasi without transcendental knowledge of Krishna. 
may yeah. appear not to be performing work, but as a soul, he cannot avoid either activity or inactivity in the results. Yes, the Mayavadi sannyasi, he is action in inaction. Right. They try to give up the world. Barijan Prabhu describes Barijan Prabhu describes a pastime which took place in Japan one time. Srila Prabhupada had come there to Japan and it happened that there was a program arranged and there was a Mayavari sannyasi there and he was also talking and Prabhupada was to talk. So the Mayavari sannyasi had printed a pamphlet about some program that he was going to give at some other place. And he distributed the pamphlets. He gave, a, he gave a pile of the pamphlets to the devotees and he said, you can take these and you can give them out to the people you meet. And so they took them and then Prabhupada had the devotees use them. He, 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 they wrapped prasadam in it. <laughs> the devotees were wondering why Prabhupada, wanted, why Prabhupada agreed to take the pamphlets. Then Prabhupada showed the devotees how to use it. It was an invitation for this Mayavari sannyasi's program, but Prabhupada just used the paper to wrap pieces of prasadam in it. <laughs> you know, he, he thought that was better use of the paper. Don't waste it, use it for Krishna's service, to put Krishna prasadam. Okay, so Rupa Goswami advises, Anasaktasya vishayanyatarham upayanjata. One should be unattached in material affairs and do everything in Krishna consciousness. By this system, which is called yukta vairagya, one attains perfection. So, this is from a purport in the eighth chapter, text 27. So, we should be unattached to the material, anasaktasya, vishayan, to the vishaya, means the material things, don't be attached. And yatarham upayanjata, do everything in Krishna consciousness. So, nirbandha krishna sambande yukta vairagya uchate. It's a well-known statement by Rupa Goswami, Nirbandha Krishna Sambandhi, Krishna Sambandha, things in relationship to Krishna, Yukta Vairagya Ujjati. So the, we use it, Yukta Vairagya, using it in, in the service of Krishna. You can see Prabhupada in the aeroplane, using the aeroplane for Krishna's service, to go and travel and preach. So we don't have to give up everything. We need to use it, make use everything. Um, from the purport, text number two, one has to act in the status of spirit soul. Otherwise, there is no escape from material bondage. Action in Krishna consciousness is not, however, action on the fruit of platform, right? But acting for the service of Krishna, it's not material. The fruit of platform means material. We're acting for our own sense gratification. We want to get something for ourselves. So that's material. But action in Krishna consciousness, devotional service, is very different. Activities performed in full knowledge strengthen one's advancement in real knowledge. Without Krishna consciousness, mere renunciation of fruitive activities does not actually purify the heart of a conditioned soul. As long as the heart is not purified, one has to work on the fruitive platform. But action in Krishna consciousness automatically helps one escape the result of fruit of action so that one need not descend to the material platform. So our heart is not yet purified, we have to work. But we don't have to work on the fruit of platform, we have to work in Krishna consciousness. 
and that helps one helps us to escape from the the fruit of action the other this is the mystery of Krishna consciousness. The Mayavadis, they don't know how to escape the fruit of re reactions. But the devotees know simply by doing everything for the service of Krishna. Then there's no reaction. Continuing, text number three describes one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced. Such a person, free from all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated, O mighty armed Arjuna. So again, working, but working in, with in the mood of renunciation, without desire for enjoying, he neither hates nor desires the fruits of activities. So that is renunciation. We work, but we're not attached to the results. So he easily overcomes the material bondage. In con here we see text number four and text number five showing the difference between the Sankhya or the Jnani and the Karma Yoga or the Bhakti. So text number four, only the ignorant speak of devotional service, Karma Yoga, as being different from the analytical study of the material world. The analytical study of the material world means the jnani or the sankhyaite, the sankhya philosophy. They are studying the material world. Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both. So there's no difference between the two. One is studying the material world to find out the cause of the world and someone else is doing karma yoga, giving up the results of his work. Then text number five, one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study, meaning the jnani, can also be attained by devotional service or karma yoga, and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level, sees things as they are. So these two verses point out there's no difference between the Sankhya and Karma Yoga. Or is there? How, how are Karma and Jnana one? Here's some quotes from Prabhupada's purport. First, text number four, the purport describes, one process is to find out the root of the tree and the other is to water the tree. So which one is finding out the root of the tree? Which process is that? Sankhya Maharaj. Yes, right. And the other is to water the root. So that's Karma Yoga or Bhakti Yoga. The real student of Sankhya philosophy finds the root of the material world, Vishnu, and then in perfect knowledge engages himself in the service of the Lord. Therefore, in essence, there is no difference between the two because the aim of both is Vishnu. <laughs> The devotees engaging in the service of Vishnu is doing karma yoga, offering the results of work to Vishnu, and the Sankhya, the Sankhya philosophy, finding out the root. They want to find out the root of the material world, which means Lord Vishnu. So same thing. Then purport number five, factually both processes are the same, although superficially one process appears to involve 
detachment and the other process appears to involve attachment. So which process appears to involve detachment? Hmm? Which process? Sankhya, jnana, jnana. Yes, I think jnana, jnana, the sankhya. They're, they're the ones who are they're involved, involving detachment. The other process appears to involve attachment. Why? Because you're working. Right? Yes, you're right, working. because working, right? This is what people often misunderstand devotees. When they see devotees working, they think we're working, when we're selling books and so on, they think we're out there just trying to make money. They think we want their money, you know? They don't, they don't understand. We, we don't sell the books. We don't go on book distribution and sell books just to get money for ourselves. We're doing it to try to give them Krishna consciousness and try to engage them in the service of Krishna. But they think we're all, we're just trying to make money, we're just asking give money, give money, and we think the money's going in our pocket, but no, it's not for us. So detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna are one and the same. Detachment from matter, that's the jnani. An attachment to Krishna, that's the devotee or the karma yogi. Karma yoga means to give up the selfish motives in work. And jnana yoga means renouncing material activities altogether. Right? Jnana yogi, they renounce all material activities. Karma yoga, we just give up the results, the selfish motive. By devotional service, however, both things are accomplished simultaneously. Both things, detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna, together. As one selflessly works for Krishna, which is not a material activity at all. Working for Krishna is not material, it's a spiritual activity. But it appears to be a material activity. People, they, they, can't, they don't understand. What is actually devotional service? This is a mystery to the non-devotees. They cannot understand the consciousness of the devotee. How they're working for Krishna, not thinking of their own self. So it's not a material activity. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, how uh, this detachment from matter like a person may be detached from matter but is either not neither uh, attached to krishna as well is detached from matter but is not attached to krishna yes okay. that's right some people may be like that some so, people some people that this statement is not complete we, we cannot say the detach if a person is detached from matter then he, he will be attached to Krishna. Yeah. But like, yeah, here but, it is, but, are one and the same. But here we're talking about the Sankhya philosophy. See, the Sankhya philosophy, they're not just detached from matter, but they're finding out the root of the material world. They want to find out the root of the material world. That is the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. So, it's not, it's not just detaching from matter, but it's researching. They study everything. The real student of Sankhya philosophy, Prabhupada wrote, this is text number four, the real student of Sankhya philosophy finds the root of the material world Vishnu. That's the real student of Sankhya philosophy. Some people may, they may just detach from matter, and they have no attachment to Krishna, that's true. But they're not Sankhites. They're not following this process of Sankhya philosophy. They're okay. just, they're just Vairagis. Maharaj, but sometimes we often see that you know, even those who are following the Sankhya philosophy, they, you know, detach from the material world, but, you know, they try to merge themselves in the Brahman. 
they try to merge themselves in common. So, you know, to those, what should we say? They are detached from the material. But they are not attached to Krishna. They are attached to this Brahma Jyoti. Yes, that's the atheist. There's the atheistic sankhya. There's a, you know, the, a lot. Most people they, they don't know Devahuti sankhya, the Devahuti kapila. They only know the atheist kapila, and the, he has a very material understanding of sankhya, and they think the soul is also material. Yeah. So the, these are different, but Prabhupada put here, the real student of Sankhya philosophy. You see, the real student of Sankhya. We are actually teaching people what is the real Sankhya philosophy. They are following the atheist Kapila. And they talk about Sankhya and they have a very atheistic understanding that life came from matter, life has evolved. In the, and it's all coming from chemicals, and we're all chemicals, and they, they talk like this. This is how they analyze the material world. But the real student of Sankhya finds Lord Vishnu as the root. So that's perfect knowledge. How, could, how to deal with these people who are, you know, who are Vairagis, they're renounced to the world, they're so renounced. Uh, how to deal with them well. Uh, one devotee was telling me they had a, they were giving out prasada in the Krishna Balaram Mandir in Vrindavan and uh, many different sadhus all came to get prasada. So there was this one Vairagi Baba came. <laughs> so they were serving out the prasada and they were giving big plates of kitchari to everyone. And they came to this one guy and they just gave him one crumb of rice. They just gave him one morsel. <laughs> and he said, ha, 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 what? come on, you gave all them a big, a big plate full, you just give me one piece of rice, one little crumb of rice. Why like that? And they said, well, because you say it's all one, right? Your teaching is all one, There's, your teaching everything is one, there's no difference. And so, you know, if we give you one grain of rice or we give you a big plate of rice, there's no difference. This is your philosophy. You see? They have philosophy, but they don't follow. They talk all these things, all nonsense. Another time they were giving blankets. They were giving, it was winter time, they were giving out blankets and the different babas were all coming. They'd take a blanket and one guy came, they gave him a threat. They give one thread, and he said, what's this? I said, it's not going to keep me warm in the winter. And they said, no, he said, it's the same, it's all one. You're preaching, it's all one. And so the, the blanket and the thread, there's no difference. We give you one piece of thread, we give you one blanket, it's all one, it's all the same. So they got a blanket, you get a thread, no difference. <laughs> Right? And the man was, what, come on, come on, give me a blanket, I want a blanket. So they, they have philosophy, but they cannot follow, they cannot apply their philosophy. They have no practical application. They say the world is unreal, but they still enjoy it. They say Brahman Satcham Jagat Mitcha, but they still enjoy the world. They still eat, they still sleep, they still keep warm, you know. They're not so much detached from everything. So, we should have philosophy. You have philosophy, you have to apply the philosophy. You just speak some philosophy, you speak all nonsense. They don't follow anything. So, detachment from matter. Yeah, we are detached from matter in the sense that we use everything for Krishna. So this is, this is real philosophy, not just simply speaking, but actually applying it in activity. Just like people talk about the soul, they say, I'm a spirit soul, but still we're very absorbed in the body and we want to enjoy the body. Right? Is it okay, Prabhu? 
Hare Krishna. Is anybody there? Are you there? Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, you could you could hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, all right, okay. So we'll go ahead. Maharaj, I have a question here. Okay. Uh, like the, uh, in the uh, Bhaktivisha module also, uh, it's mentioned about yoga ladder, where Karma Yoga leads to Gyan Yoga. But in the previous slide, uh, we are understanding that they are one and the same because the aim of both is Vishnu. So, uh, is there actually a ladder like that or like how do we uh, correlate these two? Like one place we are hearing that Karma leads to Gyan and uh, another place we are here uh, uh, reading that Karma and Gyan are same. Well, there's the, here we're hearing about the karma, niskam karma yogi who is a jnani. <laughs> right? this, this, fifth chap, this fifth chapter is showing that the niskam karma, one who can be a karma yogi, but then he gets knowledge. And so he gets the knowledge. You see, usually the jnani, the, the jnani, we think of them as giving up work. But here in the fifth chapter, you can see the fifth chapter is t entitled Action in Krishna Consciousness, Karma Yoga, Action in Krishna Consciousness. So, although it's t previously the fourth chapter was Transcendental Knowledge, so that Transcendental Knowledge is applied to the karma, the third chapter was karma yoga, fourth chapter transcendental knowledge, and now the fifth chapter is not just simply giving up work, but it's karma yoga action in Krishna consciousness. So the whole, the whole process is to show the importance of activity, that the karma yogi, although he has knowledge, he doesn't stop, he doesn't just sit down and just contemplate the knowledge. He's applying the knowledge and working at the same time. So working with knowledge. So this is the idea. Yes, sir. So you can see the progression from the chapters. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll see, and when we go on to the sixth chapter, you'll see the yoga ladder. Yes. So, Sometimes we do see sometimes the karma karma yoga persons doing karma yoga and he's renounced he's giving up the fruit of the work. But Hari Krishna, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj, we can hear you. Okay. So it, the karma yoga is working. He's working, but he gives up the fruit of his work, and because he's so pious, giving up the fruit of his work. He, people will give him knowledge. He'll get some mercy. Some somebody will tell him about, oh, this is very good. You're doing this. You know, you're under. You're detached, this, and they'll maybe give him a book. You know, just like somebody may come give a donation to the temple. So we want to give them a book. You know, give them a book like that. You know, maybe they came. They were just pious. They want to give a donation. They're doing some karma yoga. They give a donation. So we give them a book, we take a book, here, have a book, have you got a book, take this book. And they take the book and they re read the book, they get some knowledge. So in this way they, they develop, they come to the platform of Gyan. And then when they read the book, they'll read about the souls and the super soul, and then he may start to meditate and contemplate the soul and the super soul. So this is how the yoga ladder is seen. There's a progression there, from karma to jnana. Mm -hmm. But here, in this particular fifth chapter, they're talking about karma yogi who has knowledge. So he has knowledge already. So he's working, but at the same time he has knowledge. And the jnani, he's, he's not working. He's detached. He's given up. He's, you know, or the Sankhyaite, you could say, the Sankhyaite, he's given up the work, but he's still, con he's got the knowledge, he's trying to understand the root of the material world, he wants to come to Vishnu. So in that sense they're one. Yes, ma'am, uh, now, now I understood. 
Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead here. One engaged in devotional service attains the Supreme without delay. Right, and then this is text number seven. Oh, six, sorry, six. Merely renouncing all activities, yet not engaging in devotional service of the Lord, cannot make one happy. But a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the Supreme without delay. So that brings up the point you were making that some people may be, they may be renounced, they may be like sannyasis, they've renounced all activities, but they're not doing devotional service. So Lord Krishna says, they cannot make one happy. You're not going to be happy doing that. You gave up the results of the work, but why you gave up the results of the work? For the jnani, they say, well, it's material, it's, mo it's not good, I don't want to enjoy it. Just like Prabhupada gives the example, you, you see a hundred dollar note lay, laying on the ground. Now the, 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 the karmi, he will come and he'll take the money, he'll take the money and go and spend it. But the jnani, he sees the money on the street, don't touch it, he'll say, this is maya, don't he'll just leave it there. He won't touch it. But the devotee will take the money and he'll use it for Krishna. He understands it all belongs to Krishna. So the jnanis, they renounce everything, renounce all activities. They don't want to do anything. It's all maya, no, no, I'm, and Arjuna's thinking, fighting is maya also. But if they do it in devotional service, then they'll be happy. If we don't do, the, if, even if we do renounce the, the activities, it cannot make you happy. You just gave it up. No, I don't want it. You're not going to feel any happiness just giving it up. But if we use it for Krishna, engage in devotional service, that is that makes us happy. When we offer something to Krishna, we do it for Krishna, we, see, we feel blissful. We all experience, when we go to the temple, we do some devotional service, maybe decorating the temple or just doing something like uh, washing pots or uh, making flower garlands or something. We feel happy, we feel satisfied. When I was a new devotee, I was going to the temple one day and I came in the temple and the devotee said to me, he said, we're cleaning the temple today. He said, you can help. And then he said to me, he said, you know, cleaning the temple is like cleaning your heart. So I thought, wow, this sounds very good. I definitely want to take part in this activity. I knew my heart was very dirty, so I wanted to take part in cleaning the temple. So like that, he inspired me to take up devotional service, clean the heart. Okay, Prabhupada explains the purport. The Vaishnava sannyasis who are engaged in devotional service are happy in the discharge of their transcendental duties. And they have the guarantee of ultimate entrance into the kingdom of God. The Mayavari sannyasis sometimes fall down from the path of self-realization and again enter into material activities of a philanthropic and altruistic nature which are nothing but material engagements. Therefore, the conclusion is those who are engaged in Krishna conscious activities are better situated than the sannyasis engaged in simple speculation about what is Brahman and what is not Brahman, although they too come to Krishna consciousness after many births. <laughs> so Prabhupada tells us, it's encouraging there, that statement at the end about a even the, those, those sannyasis who are uh, engaged in speculation, that they will also become Krishna conscious, but it will take a long time. 
Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, after many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to Krishna. Bahunam Janmananam Ante Gyanavam Mam Prapajanti. So they come to Krishna consciousness because they follow the path of Gyan. The path of knowledge takes a long time. Described there in the uh, seventh chapter. All right, so Prabhupada is describing about the Mayavadi sannyasis that they renounce the world but then they take up some philanthropic or altruistic activity. And he said, these are nothing but material engagements. Prabhupada was never very much in favor of these kind of things. You never saw Prabhupada uh, encouraged to open a, a, mundane, a, a mundane educational institute or a hospital or these kind of things. He thought that this is, this is for other people, this is not the business of devotees. Well, at least a sannyasi, a Vaishnava sannyasi, it's not his, not his business. But these people, they, Mayavadi sannyasi, they do it, they don't know about spiritual activities. They're thinking all activities are Maya. And they give up all activity. They don't understand the importance of spiritual activities. Studying Srimad Bhagavatam, preaching and studying Bhagavad Gita, these kind of things. This is for the Vaishnava sannyasis. The Mayavari sannyasis, they just take up, they do some, you know, open a hospital or open a mundane educational institute. So many things like that are there. All right, we'll go ahead. Now text number seven is an interesting verse. Yoga yukto vishuddhatma vijitatma jitendriya sarva bhutatma bhutatma kurvan api nalipyate. Uh. One who works in devotion, who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses is dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him. Though always working, such a man is never entangled. So, we have, Lord Krishna is giving a nice description about the devotee. Let's look here. Devotee is dear to everyone. Three symptoms of spiritual advancement. First of all, Vishud Atma, a soul with purified intelligence, right? This is Lord Krishna's describing qualification to become dear to everyone. One who works in devotion, who is a pure soul and who controls his mind and senses. You can see the three words there, yoga yukta, and then vishuddhatma, vijit atma, and jitendriyaha. These three words, they are all describing the quality of the devotee to be dear to everyone. And everyone is dear to him also. It's not that he's dear to everyone and he doesn't care about anyone. Everyone is also dear to him. So he has purified intelligence and then Vijit Atma controls his mind very important qualification for a devotee because the subject of the mind, the mind will always wander, you have to bring it back. Jatendriya has conquered the senses, he's not Godas, he's a Goswami, he's a master of the senses. He may be in household or life, doesn't matter, but he's conquered the senses. So these are three important qualifications for spiritual advancement, right? How to purify our intelligence? Anybody like to say? How scriptures, Maharaj, through scriptures, 
really? by gaining the knowledge of scriptures and strengthening yes. our intelligence from the scriptures. Yes, studying the scriptures and and discussing. Prabhupada said more important than reading the scriptures is discussing them and explaining them with others. You get a group of people together and discuss and explain to them and this will help us to develop the good intelligence, purified intelligence. Remember we said the intelligence can also be polluted by lust, so we have to purify it. Why? Knowledge from Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. Then Vijit Atma, control the mind. The mind can be the friend, the mind can be the enemy. One who has conquered the mind is the best of friends. One who has failed to do so, his mind is the greatest enemy. We have to conquer, we have to control the mind. The mind will always try to defeat us, try to take us away from Krishna. We have to control the mind. When we chant, we have to fix the mind on hearing the chanting. And then Jitendriya conquered his senses. Of all the senses, the tongue, the most voracious and difficult to control. So we begin with the tongue, conquering the tongue. Use the tongue to chant and to speak about Krishna and also to taste Krishna Prasadam. Just eat Krishna Prasadam. That is real control over the tongue. Persons who possess these three qualities are free from the tendency to exploit other people and things for their own selfish interests. They are dear to everyone. They see everyone as Krishna's servant and therefore they consider themselves the servants of all. So this is very nice, three qualities helping us to avoid this tendency to exploit other people or other things for our selfish interests. This tendency is very strong in material life, the bodily concept of life. We think everybody's just there for my pleasure and we take advantage of others. So exploitation, nobody likes to be exploited, so we want to be careful. And then they see everyone as Krishna's servant and therefore they consider themselves the servants of all. So how does he think of himself? A devotee will think of himself as Yes, right. He's the servant of the servant. Right. If, if everyone is Krishna's servant, then we want to be the servant of the servants. That's very nice. Many times the servant. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught us. Uh, we should note also, it says, Sarva Bhut Atma Bhut Atma. Bhut Atma Bhut Atma. Now, the Mayavadis are very expert in taking this statement and they will give it their Mayavadi meaning. How will they explain this? Bhutatma, Bhutatma, Sarva Bhutatma, Bhutatma. They will say, he is the soul of all souls. <laughs> the soul of all souls. All right? So they, they like to make everything one. So they will say like that, the soul of all souls. They won't say, they won't explain it the way we've explained it. We say dear to everyone and everyone is dear to him. But they, they will say he's the soul of all souls. 
In other words, everybody is one, it's all one. The Maya, the, 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 the simple Sanskrit makes it very easy for people to put the Mayavadi meaning into it. So you have to watch out for that when you're explaining this verse. The soul of all souls. Uh, yeah, sarva but atma but atma. We explain it like this. His body, atma, because atma can mean body, mind and soul. So his body becomes the object of love. Atma bhuta. For all living beings, sarva bhuta. Or another meaning, whose heart feels for all beings as for oneself. The feeling we have for everyone is the feeling we would have for ourselves. That is, that's very nice, you know, we certainly always take care of ourselves, we feel a lot for ourselves, we want to make sure we're okay. So we should feel like that for everyone, for all beings. We don't just think only of ourselves, but we think of everyone else. And then we quote this verse here. This is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Nishingadev, offering prayer, Prahlad Maharaj rather, offering prayers to Lord Nishingadev. Hmm? Maybe you know this verse heard it before. Lord, my dear Lord Nishringadeva, I see that there are many saintly persons indeed, but they are interested only in their own deliverance, not caring for the big cities and towns. They go to the Himalayas or the forest to meditate with vows of silence, monavrat. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, I wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet. So this is Prahlad Maharaj's prayer to Lord Nasringadev. And this is expressing this mood, this sarva but atma but atma, that he's caring about others, compassion, feelings about others. He said, I'm not worried about myself. He said, I'm not like these people who go to the Himalayas. They're only thinking about their own liberation. But Prahlad said, I don't want to be liberated alone. He said, I'm worried about these other people who don't know about Krishna and I want to give them the shelter. I want to bring them to Krishna consciousness. So this is a, the proper understanding of this phrase, sarva bhutatma bhutatma. Not just simply the one soul within all souls, not just that oneness. Okay, going ahead, text number eight and nine. The state of being freed from entanglement. Lack of the concept of being a doer, right? Who is a doer? This is discussed here in this chapter. Who is, who is actually the doer? Am I responsible for everything? Did I do it? Or did the material nature do it? Or was it all Krishna? We say Ishvara Parama Krishna, right? Krishna is the supreme controller. So Krishna did everything. So I shouldn't be responsible for anything. Because Krishna is doing everything. So it's all Krishna's fault. It's not my fault. Right? We may say like that. So who is the doer? This is going to be explained here. So text 8 and 9, a person in the Divine Consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping and breathing, always knows within himself that he actually does nothing, he does nothing at all. 
Do we do? So we don't. The, you 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 see here in this verse there the saying we don't actually do anything at all. Person in divine consciousness, he he doesn't do anything. Who actually does it? It's all done by material nature. Text 11, free from attachment, the yogis abandoning attachment act with body, mind, intelligence and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification. So we act, the yogi will act, but for purification. And he gives up attachment, he's not attached. He's acting in a detached way. So this way he becomes free from attachment, he gets freed from entanglement. Right? So probably we want you now to do something, it's an exercise for you. Sad achar. Sad achar, you know the meaning? Purified activities. And we want you to give arguments in favor and against. Oh, sorry. In favor and against. How sadhachar can be easily performed by acting in Krishna consciousness. Sadhachar leads to liberation. Sadhachar, purified activities can be easily performed by Krishna Consciousness. Is it true or what's wrong? Argue against it. <laughs> Alright, we want to make a debate. How many men do we have here today? How many are male? Maharaj, Maharaj, 12 members. How many ladies? How many men? Six Matajis. Okay. okay, so six Matajis, they have to be in favor of Sadhachar being performed in Krishna consciousness. And the men, we want to hear arguments against Krishna consciousness. Against Sadhachar in Krishna consciousness. What are some arguments which say that, oh, no, no, Krishna consciousness is not so purifying. We're not going to get pure, it's not going to give us liberty, it's not going to purify us. It's not so easy. Here we say easily performed by Krishna Consciousness. So we want to hear arguments which say it's not so easy from the men. Is it clear? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. All right. So ladies can meet together some arguments in favor and some arguments from the men against. You have to read 8 to 11, text 8. I have, I have spoiled my life, waiting for the whole life. Now I have time to enjoy, I want to enjoy uh, sense gratification. Now you are saying to chant, when will I uh, do satisfy my senses? When will I get the time? In my old age? So this is my young age to enjoy. Do you have any argument? your old age. Maharaj, no competitor. Well, I think the ladies didn't pick up on your challenge, you yeah. know. They, were, they, want, they, want, <laughs> they want to read first of all. 
and just what you know you also if you can just read through the purport this few verses first of all give you a few minutes and then we'll discuss When Mataji left the field, Hare Krishna Maharaj, can we? Yes, but I think we can begin now. Okay. So, you had an argument, you were saying? Yes, I have put one allegation that I, I, I spent my whole life in reading and completing my qualification. I didn't need any sense gratification. I am thirsty of doing sense gratification. I, 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 giving my time to chanting. When, when will I do sense gratification? This is my age to sense gratify. 
We have no problems with you gratifying say, your senses now no, no. or later. You can continue gratifying your senses, but you have to be prepared for the reactions. As long as you are happy to get the reactions which can be given now or later, we, we have no problems. But if you are ready to face the consequences of your action... At that time I will renounce, I will come to you. You are here as a Vaishnava, you also, you are saying that being a Vaishnava, being a devotee, as you have stated in 3rd Canto, 25th chapter and 21st Shaloka, a sadhu's qualification is to help others to get, uh, get rid of this uh, material world. Then one side you are saying that you will help, other side you, you are saying that you, you don't help. Yeah, I am so, willing to help. We are all willing to help. But if you put things in right perspective, if you have read, we have read so much Bhagavatam, then you should very well know that sense gratification will lead us nowhere. Plus the main... main I have jnana, but my heart is not yet purified. I am so contaminated inside. I am full of gratification. Yes. So if you continue doing what you are doing, like, you know, there is no point scratching your itch. Your heart is full and pure. You are scratching your itch. The more you scratch, it's going to bleed, but you will not be satisfied. Similarly, it's wonderful, it's appreciable that, you know, you are doing it. But if you stick and do more, just continue, then you will come to a point. See, here we are reading Bhagavad Gita, what it says. When one acts in Krishna consciousness for satisfaction of uh, Krishna, uh, senses of Krishna, any action, whether out of mind, body or intelligence, is purified of material contamination. There are no material reactions resulting from these activities, and these the, these act. So, if you are if you are already doing this much, we encourage you to take up a bit more, continue. And you see here we are reading; it is so wonderfully explained. You know, if you just engage for the pleasure of Krishna, your senses for the pleasure of Krishna, then these all purifications will come, which you are hankering for, which you are thinking. You're going to be happy by satisfying your senses, but it will definitely come if you stick a bit longer. Atat Khan Prabhu, over to you. So, uh, uh, I have one thing. My question is, my understanding is Sadhachar can be easily performed with acting with Krishna consciousness is not correct because it's difficult. For example, let's say I'm performing, let's say, Mangalarati with Prabhu. Uh, Mridana and Karta at my house, right, with loud sun at around morning 4.30 a.m., right, it is Sadhacha, it is proper uh, Krishna conscious activity, but then, uh, you know, the neighbors will come and they will beat me, right, so I don't think it's an easy thing, is my argument. Prabhu, I think, uh, by practicing Krishna consciousness is very easy, I'm actually I'm very happy that you're doing Mangala Arati and all, but then, uh, no need to be so loud, you know, if your neighbors are not happy, you just be, because whether loud or not loud, Bhagavan can hear because he's in, inside our heart as Paramatma. But it's difficult. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying easy. It's not easy. You have to be controlled. You have to look at the surroundings and control yourself the what happens. I think it's not easy. Yes, yes, Mataji, go ahead. Well, we want to reach Krishna. It's not easy to reach Krishna. He's Bhagavan. But he's giving simplified. Uh, Shri Prabhupada already simplified to us how to reach Krishna. So, of course, as so a material like body... It's not easy, right? No, I'm saying that Just we have to uh, make enthusiasm that we have to approach Krishna. We have the <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> we need to have... You said the... it's not easy, right? You have to do some effort. I'm not denying that. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm saying it's difficult. It's not easy. I'm putting the word easily is not is not very correct. Sadhacha can be uh, can be is possible by performing acting in KC. That I agree. But easily, I'm not agreeing. Well, nothing is Prabhu. As we see, nothing is easily done in this material world. Even for your basic graduation, basic qualification, even to get. Pass for year 12 certificate also we had to work hard. So yes, Krishna consciousness is easy. As Prabhupada says, easy for the easy and, and crooked for, for those who are crooked. Simple, Mother, that's, he says simple, not easy. Yeah, he, yeah. Okay, easy, if we say easy, it is easy provided we have 
doing it under the right guidance and are proper. But with the Sada child, the point I'll come back, you are doing Mangla Arti and your neighbors are coming to complain. They, are, they don't know, but they are getting this benefit. So it is like a bitter pill of medicine. They are not knowing, but they are also getting benefit. Even in their sleep, they are, you know, hearing the names of Lord. But are you getting the reaction, Mother? Huh? Although I'm acting in Krishna consciousness, I'm getting reaction. Reaction? They are, they are complaining, they are complaining. society, they are beating me, let's say, for example. Yeah. In the morning itself, they are giving a lots of abuses that you are blowing bombshell on our ears. We are not able to sleep. We have so much good weather in Delhi. Rainy season going on. Very, yes. very awesome yes. weather outside, and you are disturbing us. But but that that's but the whole sleeping, point. Like sleeping. Krishna Premi Mataji said, you know, you don't have to blow all that conch shell and all. If you really want to do Mangalarti, you can still do it. It can be easily performed. You just clap your hands and you can sing along. Agree, Mataji. The point is that, yes, you're right in that sense. It's not easy just to think of all these things. You need some intelligence to perform all these things. Now, we'll go to the next point. I agree, right? Let's say uh, another thing is among devotees, right? Although you are performing Krishna conscious activities, Let's say, for example, take book distribution. There is a uh, there is a kind of competitive spirit that goes up among devotees in types of in terms of scores and I mean, if you are from a bigger congregation or let's say in collection of donations. So there are many many things that happen. Right? So in this thing, everybody is acting for Krishna. Everybody is doing Krishna conscious activities, but there is some sense of fame when you are when you are moving up the scoreboards. It's very difficult to be detached from those kind of things, even in devotee association. I'm not saying it's it, it's not possible. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah. Your, team, your team is not participating. It's not only you. you. It's, it's I'm your waiting. Team. We are we are waiting. Whoever speaks. Revati is silent, sitting near besides. Ask her to speak. Prabhu. Yeah. Yeah. Even during Prabhu, you are you you haven't said anything. We are waiting for your flight. Prabhu, can I can I can I say for this point that you were saying about the ladder the, that when we go up the ladder and there is pride? Yes. I mean, yes. 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 Yeah. So so with that, yes, those those qualities do come up, but that is the result of our. Uh, you know, it's like we are cleaning our heart. Chetu Darpa Majan, heart is clean and all these qualities are coming out. But they, they're being cleansed for good in the sense when there is pride, there will of course be consequence. And when there will be consequence, there is of course a learning. So ultimately, it's a win-win situation. The heart is also being cleansed and the pride is also going. So ultimately, it's a win-win situation. Yes. But purification, all I'm saying is purification is not easy. It's difficult. No, it's not. It Nothing is easy. Pain. I agree. Yeah. I agree, nothing yes. is easy. That's that's my only but, point, but, It's not the, easy, that's all I'm saying. But if we are talking of Sadachar here, in the sense Sadachar is, is performing good, let's say if somebody wants to uh, donate uh, some uh, prashadam, let's say someone wants to give food to the poor. So for, for a person who is not in Krishna consciousness, if they are just donating food, then they have to go through a lot of effort in the sense that, you know, they are actually giving karmic reactions by offering. But if a person is actually doing prashadam distribution, then that is sadachar and it is easily performed. There is no karmic reaction. They are benefiting themselves and they are benefiting others also. So that sadachar is naturally performed, easily performed when somebody is acting in Krishna consciousness. Other example is meat eating. If somebody wants to give up meat eating, and uh, they are trying artificially. We have a family here, Bhakti Viksha. They tried artificially everything they couldn't. But the moment they started offering to the Lord and honoring Prashada, it can be easily performed. Now they are doing Sadachar. And now she easily came to platform of 16 rounds. So the point is, those so-called moral activities which people try to artificially perform, let's say giving up smoking, giving up, giving up drinking, you know, they, they, they practice, you know, there is all these... Uh, uh, motivational speakers, you know, yes, you can do it, you can win. If those things people are trying to, you know, manipulate and do on the mental level, but if they become Krishna conscious, they're naturally becoming Sadhacharya and it can be easily performed without any artificial impositions. Yes, 
Well, Mataji, uh, you are you are talking about uh, donating prasadam or donating food. Uh, it's easy for you to donate some food or prasad, but it may not be easy for uh, for any other person or maybe for other people to to donate that much of food or or, or to sponsor uh, prasad. So you have lots of money in your bank account. I give you base, base account uh, bank details. You can please sponsor some some um, prasadam distribution. Uh, uh, we need that. And uh, so it's not e- it's is it's easy for someone, but it may not be for easy or for everyone. So so prasadam was just an example. What what was it? It's hard earned money for everyone. But it's not that easy that people uh, uh, pick, uh, took that sum of money uh, to donate. So it, it takes a lot of effort even to extract or even to uh, uh, motivate them to donate for something, for some good cause. So that was just an example. Prashadam distribution was just an example. The point I guess I was trying to make is... Sadachar can be easily performed and prashadam distribution was just an example. Now, any poor person can also, if they are really wanting to make change in their heart, then if they become Krishna conscious, that can be easily done. That was the point I'm saying. Prashadam was just an example, prashadam distribution, but any other qualities we can take, any other thing we can take. For example, you, you maybe you suggest an example and I can say how that can be easily performed in Krishna consciousness. Maybe you, you suggest a point where you know, I can say, yes, this is how Sadhachar can be easily performed in Krishna consciousness. No, you are the petitioner, actually. I am, I am not. Okay. So, and, and another, someone, someone, may, like. someone may say, you know, I have a problem with my anger. I can't control my anger. So how can Sadhachar help me in Krishna consciousness? I have a point in mind, but I'm waiting if somebody else wants to speak. Uh, anger can be controlled when we control our mind and senses. That's why in Gita it is said. But uh, another point I like to find out for easily perform as what uh, uh, Prabhu here mentioning is not easily to perform in Krishna consciousness. It's just like an example of a mother. She normally she sacrifice everything. She wakes up early, you know, for the sake of her children. When you love Krishna, when you know Krishna is a uh, everything belongs to Krishna and Krishna is a supreme Bhagavan and we everything and then we have to perform everything for the satisfaction for the satisfaction of Krishna then on all then only all our senses senses will be satisfied so for that it will be easily performed if we have love for Krishna and uh, well, that's a very that's a very big thing to ask for love for Krishna. You know, I mean, that's very hard, <laughs> not easy to get that. You know, I mean, well, I mean, you know, I'm just a neophyte devotee. You know, I'm just trying to give up my bad habits. And you know, you're telling me to get love if I have love of Krishna, but love of Krishna that's way up the top. How am I going to get Krishna prem? You know, that's I mean, I'm just trying to control my mind and senses. You tell me I have to have Krishna Prem. Well, the most important thing is, Maharaj, is that we need to have a Sadhu Sangha. We need to associate with devotees. Then we can uh, nourish the love for Godhead, nourish the love for Krishna. Mataji, I have seen... Maharaj, regarding anger... In, in Vrindavana, offering tea to the Lord, are they loving God or they are against God? They are offering everything to the Lord, even tea, in Vrindavana. They are not ISKCON devotees. Yeah, of course, they are not ISKCON devotees. But we are all following Prabhupada's principles. Yes, what you were going to say about anger, Maharaji, in religion? Yes, regarding anger, we have examples of how anger can also be used in service of the Lord. For example, Hanuman became really, really angry. 
and he burned Lanka and Arjuna also fought this war. So if somebody is really, really angry, they can channelize all their anger and, you know, utilize their anger for making the whole world Krishna conscious. For example, if they, are, they, they have to use their anger that, you know, so much godlessness is going on, so much abortion, sin, all these things are going on. So rather use that anger and do something which is like, you know, go out, distribute books, do Harinam so that you can uh, use, you are channelizing your anger in, in this way. You're using your anger in the right way against all these. They people. are not using their anger in the uh, in uh, banishing all the Talibanis there in Afghanistan. Why? They, they can use their 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 anger in a very best suitable way. That is very much needed there. Why they are not using? They can they can act like a kshatriya. We are love and peace movement, Prabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his own example, he didn't pick up Sudarshan Chakra. He rather, you know, Jagai and Madai were forgiven. Nobody is greater than Jagai and Madai. So we are following in footsteps of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there is no need to pick up guns. There is no need to fight. We just follow. We just do our, we, we give love and there is no power greater than love in this whole world. You know, the, the Taliban, they have a lot of things in line with our philosophy, you know. They, <laughs> they apply a, a lot of the things of Krishna consciousness. Yes. <laughs> you see but, many things in common. Yeah, they, 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 the main principle, one of our four pillars is uh, no meat-eating and that is for mercy. And that's where we can see they don't have mercy because they're not, uh, you know, following the, the basic principle. Mm. And they're not seeing everybody on the soul platform. They are seeing rather on the sect level that anybody who's not a Muslim is a problem. So that, that basic philosophy where Krishna started, we are not this body, that they don't have that understanding. And that's where the whole problem starts. That they become extremists and we don't become extremists. We are, we are giving holy name of God, we're giving prasadam. That's the basic difference. That's where we are and that's where... So, Mataji, you agree that, agree to it that Sadhachara cannot be easily performed? Oh, it can be easily performed, Prabhu. That's what I'm so saying. So, you are saying that. But people don't, people are not merciful. Then how could it be easily performed? We can, we cannot uh, go there uh, bringing our Mridanga in front of them. How can it be easily performed? There, there are ways, Prabhu, ways and means if we want to really do it. In the Pakistan also, the Rath Yatra is happening. Very soon, if we continue and pursue, we, Afghanistan will also have something. Yeah. There are so many devotees from Bangladesh. They are so strong. They are so powerful. So if that those places are, are things are happening, then, you know. The yeah, Muslim also, they do kirtan. They also like, you know, maybe they don't chant yeah. Hare Krishna, but they, they, have, they have the Sufis, you know, they do playing kirtan and dancing. And we are distributing a lot of Arabic books, uh, Arabic Bhagavad Gita's in Melbourne. We are doing a lot. My own personal experience, we were doing Harinam Sankirtan. They are wearing uh, the whole ma, the hijab, everything. And they are still participating in Harinam. Their only objection is they don't want to be recorded, but they are participating. Right. No. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Very nice to see your debate like this. Sorry, Mataji. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. This is our task, Prabhu. <laughs> so, Srila Prabhupada explains, dovetailing everything in Krishna consciousness. Naiva kinchit karomiti. A Krishna conscious person never thinks that I am doing something. So, this is the, the, the thinking of a Krishna conscious person. Prabhupada is talking about his spiritual master. He never thinks, I am doing something. Even if you ask him that, are you going to such and such a place? He will say that, I do not know when I shall go, but when Krishna will ask me or allow me to go, I shall go. So this is the Krishna conscious person. That everything is dedicated to Krishna. I was saying this from my practical experience from my Guru Maharaj. He would never say, I am going, I am doing. No. He would say, if Krishna desires, then I shall do it. If Krishna desires, then I shall go. 
So this is very interesting instruction from Srila Prabhupada, how we want to think and how we should speak. If Krishna desires, I will do it. If Krishna desires, I will come. Right? The more the activities of the material world are performed in Krishna consciousness or for Vishnu only, the more the atmosphere becomes spiritualized by complete absorption. So the activities of the material world, they can all be dovetailed in the service of Krishna. And this will make the material world just like the spiritual world. It's just up to us. The Absolute Truth covered by Maya is called matter. Matter dovetailed for the cause of the Absolute Truth regains its spiritual quality. Krishna Consciousness is the process of converting the illusory consciousness into Brahman or the Supreme. From chapter 4, text 24 purport. So sometimes devotees would do like that, they would say, come and see matter made into spirit. And people would be, wow, we have to check this out. And they'd come and they'd see devotee, they'd, they'd bring a plate of prasad, a big plate of offering, and put it on the altar, draw the curtain, and then they'd ring the bell and chant some mantras. And they said, now it's all spiritual. All the material, the food is material, it's become spiritualized by offering it to Krishna. So this is Krishna Consciousness. You can see Prabhupada's in the car. The car is a spiritual vehicle because it's being used in the service of Krishna. It's not material. So this is the process of Krishna Consciousness. This Krishna Consciousness movement is therefore the greatest boon to humanity because it keeps one always engaged in Krishna's service. Devotees think of Krishna, act for Krishna, eat for Krishna, sleep for Krishna and work for Krishna. Thus everything is engaged in the service of Krishna. A total life in Krishna consciousness saves one from material contamination. That's from the fourth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 30, the activities, the activities of the prachetas. Okay. Coming back to the fifth chapter, the same action produces positive, produces two, the same action producing two results. Uh, the first part, persons in Krishna consciousness attached to Krishna leads to liberation. And the second part, persons in bodily consciousness attached to results of his activities leads to bondage. So we can see the contrast. The same action, but different consciousness. Somebody's in Krishna consciousness, get liberation. Somebody's in bodily consciousness becomes entangled, bondage in the material world. He's attached to the results. But in Krishna consciousness, the person's attached to Krishna and the results are for Krishna. So that's liberation. So text number 12 is describing these two aspects of the same activity could be the same activity, one person's fighting the battle, Arjuna's fighting the battle and some other people fighting, it's going to be different. Platform of peace and fearlessness. All that exists is a product of Krishna's energy and Krishna is all good. Therefore activities in Krishna consciousness are on the absolute plane. They are transcendental and have no material effect. 
One is therefore filled with peace in Krishna consciousness. But one who is engaged in profit calculation for sense gratification cannot have that peace. This is the secret of Krishna consciousness. Realization that there is no existence besides Krishna is the platform of peace and fearlessness. So if we have that consciousness that there is no, no existence except Krishna, then we have nothing to fear. We will always be peaceful wherever you go. Right? Srimad Bhagavatam says, where you go to hell or heaven or liberation, it's all the same. Wherever you go, you just do service to Krishna. It doesn't make any difference. But if you go to heaven without Krishna consciousness, it becomes hell. And if you go to hell in Krishna consciousness, it becomes better than heaven. All right, so here's the objectives which we covered today. Connection between the fourth and fifth chapter. At the end of the fourth chapter, Lord Krishna had said, stand and fight. Arjuna was confused because he thought Krishna was encouraging the process of knowledge. And Arjuna thought knowledge meant inaction. So that was, that's a connection. Arjuna asked his question at the beginning of the fifth chapter, which is better, which one do you want me to do? And then, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work. Renunciation of work does not purify the heart like devotional service. Devotional service satisfies Krishna. Renunciation of work doesn't satisfy Krishna. Then we talked about yukta and falgu vairagya, giving up work, false renunciation, and yukta vairagya, renouncing in relation to Krishna. And then finally, we discussed how a devotee is dear to everyone. How a devotee is dear to everyone. Because he sees everyone as a servant of Krishna and he wants to serve the devotees and the devotees, they appreciate that. Then we talked about sadhachar sada and how it can be performed by acting in Krishna consciousness. And finally, devotee souls attain unadulterated peace. Everyone wants peace. We'll hear about peace at the end of the fifth chapter. How to get peace? What is the formula for peace? So those souls who are devoted, they get that peace of mind because they see everywhere in relation to Krishna. Finally, end quote, in the Bhagavatam, the cause of anxiety over the result of an activity is explained as being one's functioning in the concept of duality, that is without knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Right? Cause of anxiety over the result of an activity is explained as being one's functioning in the concept of duality. We're attached to the result, this is duality, we're thinking, oh, good result or bad result, that's not that's the mind, that's not good. So that without knowledge of the Absolute Truth, it's a cause of anxiety when we're attached to the results. So we want, it indicates no knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Okay, next week we'll go on the rest of the fifth chapter. All right, so. Thank you very much. Any questions before we close the class? Anything? Anybody has any comment or question? No? Okay. So we'll see you next week. We'll go on to the, finish the fifth chapter and then on Sunday we'll go on to the sixth chapter. 
Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Brinda ki. Hare Krishna.